This is a video describing the fabrication of a thin film transistor using microfabrication techniques. Here is a microscope image of the transistors we're going to produce. And here's a cartoon describing how that's made. We start with a substrate, shown in purple. We deposit a thin gate metal onto the substrate. This gate metal is then patterned into desired shapes uh, using a lithography process in which resist is put on the wafer and the resist is patterned into certain shapes and then that resist serves as a mask for the removal of the gate metal, uh, producing uh, the gate metal patterned into gate shapes. A gate dielectric uh, is then deposited onto the wafer, followed by thin film transistor active material. Uh, these two materials are th subsequently patterned, again using a, lith a lithography process. Once the gate dielectric and thin film transistor material have been patterned and the gate and the uh, photoresist removed. Uh, source drain metal is then deposited on the wafer and the source drain metal is patterned using lithography uh, to produce the final thin film transistor shape. So we want to go through this process in real life now. Uh, and show you what it looks like in an actual clean room. So we begin with the substrate. The substrate is typically a silicon wafer with thermal oxide uh, grown on the substrate. We need to deposit the gate metal. In our case, it's going to be chromium, approximately 1,000 angstroms thick, and that will be deposited using E-beam evaporation, which is shown here. Inside of an E-beam evaporator, uh, you will find a chromium source material, the chamber is placed under high vacuum and electrons uh, at high energies are forced to impinge on that chromium metal causing it to locally heat and uh, when it does get hot its vapor pressure increases and uh, that vapor is then collected by the substrate. So here we're just finishing up the deposition of a thousand angstroms of the chromium and you can see the wafer is now coated with a metallic film. This film now, now needs to be patterned using photolithography. And the first step of doing that is to spin on the photoresist using these spinners that are shown here. And then that resist is baked on a hot plate uh, using uh, to remove solvents, followed by exposure of the resist using uh, a contact aligner. So let's go through those processes. We first add uh, photoresist to the wafer. That's the pink liquid that you see here. The substrate and photoresist are spun at uh, high angular velocities, uh, and that produces a thin film of photoresist, approximately one micron thick in our case. The resist is then baked on the hot plate, and then that resist is uh, exposed using the contact aligner, which shines ultraviolet light through this mask. The mask has opaque regions and clear regions. Regions that are clear, the ultraviolet light goes through and it impinges on the resist. And the resist in those regions will then become soluble in a developer. In the opaque regions, the resist will not be exposed to ultraviolet light and the resist will not be soluble. Uh, for regions uh, uh, that were not exposed to photoresist. After exposure, the resist uh, containing a substrate is placed into a developer, and this will remove resist from the regions that were exposed to ultraviolet light, in our case. You can see the resist dissolving here. Uh, the, the wafer is then cleaned, and now we're ready to remove the chromium from the regions where the resist has been removed. We use a chromium etch for that. So the wafer is placed in a container and uh, chromium etch is uh, uh, then added to the container and that is now removing the chromium metal uh, that is now exposed. The regions which still have resist on the chromium metal, the, the chrome will not be removed in those regions. So following the etching of the chromium, uh, we now need to strip the resist uh, from the wafer. We use a special solvent uh, for that. Uh, it's called Remover PG. 
the remover PG is uh, poured on top of the wafer and uh, that removes the remaining photoresist on the wafer. So at this stage we just have chromium metal sitting on our original substrate and the chromium metal has been patterned into the shapes that we're interested in uh, for uh, thin film transistor applications. The wafer looks like this at this stage and if we were to look under a microscope we would see patterned chromium that looks like this. Now next we need to deposit the gate dielectric and it's going to be a 1000 angstrom silicon nitride film in our case and we do that using plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition the PECVD system is shown here we have RF power going into the system uh, this RF power creates a plasma and in this case the gases that will form the plasma are mixtures of argon, silane, and ammonia the silane and the ammonia uh, react to form silicon nitride Here we're putting the wafer into the PECVD system and uh, here we see after turning the process gases on and striking the plasma uh, we can see uh, uh, light being emitted mainly from the argon atoms that are excited uh, in this process and we are depositing approximately a thousand angstroms of silicon nitride now. Once the silicon nitride is deposited we need to deposit the transistor active layer. So in this case it's going to be zinc oxide uh, that we're going to use and we're going to deposit that zinc oxide by sputtering. Here is a sputtering system. Inside of the sputtering system you'll see four different sources in this case. Uh, there's a target and the target has a shutter that can be opened and closed above it uh, allowing in, uh, sputtering from four different sources simultaneously. Thicknesses of thin films can be monitored using uh, a quartz crystal balance shown here and the substrates can be heated uh, by lamps uh, shown here. This is a target so this target is bombarded with argon ions uh, that are created in the sputtering process and that causes the ejection of the target material and uh, that target that ejected target material is then collected on the substrate. So we put the substrate into the sputtering system and again this happens under vacuum. Uh, typical sputtering pressures may be in the three millitor range. Uh, so here we can see uh, the plasma is ignited inside of the sputtering system. Again it's purpley glow indi indicating argon uh, is present. And after we deposit approximately 400 angstroms of zinc oxide we now go through a patterning step, another lithography step, using a different mass this time to create uh, different shapes for the transistor active layer and for the silicon nitride gate dielectric. So after exposure the resist is spun onto the wafer, baked, and then exposed uh, using the contact aligner and we now are ready to pattern the zinc oxide in the in the gate dielectric material. The zinc oxide is patterned using a wet etch process uh, which does not attack the silicon nitride gate dielectric and then the gate dielectric is patterned using a reactive ion etch process. The reactive ion etch process is a plasma process again uh, so it involves a vacuum chamber shown here. Uh, the wafer is placed inside of this vacuum chamber. Uh, the pressure uh, of the gases uh, that are uh, flowing into the chamber is then well controlled and in this case we're going to produce a plasma that contains uh, uh, chemical species that can react with silicon nitride and produce a volatile species that will desorb from the wafer surface and so the silicon nitride in regions where there is no pattern photoresist will now be removed from the wafer. So you could see the white plasma uh, taking uh, in, uh, that was part of the uh, that was indicative of the gases that are being used in this process. 
So now we strip the photoresist again off the wafer, uh, and that will leave us a wafer that has pattern gates, and on top of those pattern gates will now be uh, regions of gate dielectric and uh, thin film transistor active regions. And you can see those as kind of yellow, yellowy colored regions in this photograph. Next we need to deposit the source drain materials. In this case we're going to use molybdenum as the source drain. And that molybdenum will be deposited by sputtering. Uh, so we go back into the sputtering system, uh, place the substrate into the sputtering system and use a, again a plasma process that will force argon ions to impinge on a molybdenum target and those molybdenum target will eject molybdenum atoms which uh, are then collected by the substrate. The source drain regions are then patterned. The source drain metal, the molybdenum, is then patterned using another lithography process with a third mask that has the desired shapes for the source drain regions on it. So again, we put the resist down, bake it, go through the contact aligner to expose the resist in the desired shapes. And now we're going to etch the molybdenum metal using a reactive ion etch process again. So again, you can see the, the plasma inside of the reactive ion etch chamber. Uh, once the etching is completed, we again strip the photoresist off of the wafer uh, using the PG remover, uh, spin rinse dry it, and now we have completed fabrication of the thin film transistor. Uh, and if we look under a microscope, uh, you will see structures that look like this. So we can see a gate pad on the right, two source drain contacts, uh, and the active region shown in yellow can test the thin film transistor by placing it in a probe station. Here we have needles that make contact to the gate and source drain regions of the transistor. Under the microscope, this is what the probes touching the gate and source drain regions uh, looks like. And then if we test those structures, we will see the characteristic transistor uh, IV curves. So here we see the transistor going into saturation uh, during the test. And so in this test, we are changing the gate voltage and measuring the drain current that occurs as the drain voltage is increased. And we can see as the gate voltage is increasing, uh, the drain current is also, the saturation value of the drain current is also increasing, as would be expected for a transistor. And that concludes uh, the video describing how we construct a thin film transistor.